Here's the best known picture in economics, the supply and demand graph in its simplest form. Our first mission in this tape is to draw the graph in a way that'll save you time when you need to draw it for a test, a problem set, or years from now, by which time the point of the pretty pictures in first year economics has faded for most people, though hopefully not you. First, on the vertical, we put price. And here's a dumb, helpful hint I learned when I took microeconomics as an adult. P is a vertical letter, so you put the P next to the vertical axis of the supply and demand graph. My micro professor says he saved a lot of time and embarrassment over the years with this memory aid alone. Okay, the other axis is for quantity, how much is supplied or demanded. With price now spoken for on the vertical, quantity goes to the only axis left, the horizontal. So let's see how these so-called curves might get generated in real life. Many of the buyers here are Amish, not exactly known as spendthrifts, but when it comes to price, they're really no different from the rest of us. They love a bargain. Here, that might be $500 a cow. But at that price, not many cows would be brought to market. For milk cow suppliers, $500 is less than it costs to breed and raise them. If the price gets out low, we just get out of the market. Basically, at that price, we just make more room at the farm and uh, just keep hoping the market's going to turn up. But we're about to build a supply curve, and we need a starting point. So let's imagine some incredibly low-cost cow producer, some guy who lives with his cow on the town commons, has literally no overhead at all. For him, $500 would go a long way. So one guy would supply a quantity of one cow. And this marks the beginning of our hypothetical Amish cow supply curve. $500, one cow supplied. But suppose the bidding started heating up. That's $1,000, auction lingo for 1000 At that price, sellers like Dennis Wolf would be willing to join the supply curve and start bringing their livestock to market. At $1,000, we would probably sell uh, half of our surplus stock at that point. So at $1,000, sellers would supply more cows, say, a few. Thus, the next point on the supply curve. A lowish price would draw out only a lowish quantity. However, now imagine a higher price. As the price went up, if the price went to $1,500, we would sell most of our surplus stock. Our supply curve is filling out nicely. As the price rises, suppliers offer up quite a few of these gals. And if the price gets up to $2,000, we sell our surplus stock plus reach into our own uh, breeding program and sell additional cattle. If the price were to reach $2,000, Dennis would kiss Bossy and her girlfriends goodbye and virtually launch them all off to market. You could say the auctioneer would be milking the bidders for all they're worth, but the point is, more money per cow, more cows for sale. Right, here we go, she's fresh, 25 and a 50, get a 50. I can't believe it, we're giving her away. Turn her once, turn her twice, let them see underneath. Look at the chrome all over the side of that udder. All those veins. What I have for? Look, here we go. And finally, imagine that the bidding is utterly out of control. I don't know, $10,000 a head. In which case, tons of cud chewers would fly to market. If the price reached $10,000 a cow, I'd sell everything I own and I'd retire. That's the classic supply curve. And for drawing it from scratch, here's another little time saver. Supply goes up. <laughs> supply. But of course, that's only half the story. That's a bargain right there with that pedigree. And our auctioneer is actually playing to the other half. I'm asking 1950. I got 1900. The consumers who make up the demand curve. We're stealing it at 2400, at 2400. Which we'll draw in the next video. 2500 at cheese. A bargain at $2,450.